Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to Moonlight Productions. Today, it's the Granite State, New Hampshire. New Hampshire was admitted as the ninth state on June 21st, 1788. The shape of New Hampshire was formed all the way back in 1629. Its left wiggle line is the border that separates Vermont and New Hampshire, which is along the Connecticut River. Massachusetts and New Hampshire did not have a friendly relationship when the areas were both founded. Both sides wanted more land than they had originally owned. This rivalry wouldn't end until it was ruled out by King George II in 1741. Both states quit the nonsense they had given each other. As slavery was starting to get traction along the nation, over in the United States anyway, slavery wasn't allowed in New Hampshire. However, the state imposed no tariffs on the imports of enslaved people into the United States. As a result, people would later import them to another colony that did have legalized slavery, namely the Deep South. Once Abraham Lincoln was elected to the presidency in 1860, New Hampshire sided with the Union to battle the fleeing Confederacy. After the war, New Hampshire was a popular location for those working in Massachusetts, essentially a giant suburb of the entire state of Massachusetts. New Hampshire is 44th in land mass. Meanwhile, the population of the Granite State is the 44th smallest population in the nation. An estimated 1.3 million residents live in New Hampshire, or about 0.41% of the U.S. population. Concord is the state capital, home to around 44,000 U.S. residents. That makes Concord the 41st smallest state capital by residents. New Hampshire is quite a famous and beloved state with many good aspects to being there. I myself loved visiting the state during the holidays of 2018. However, no place is perfect, and it's my responsibility to talk about the positive and negative aspects of living in New Hampshire. So, get out some hot cocoa as I bring you the good and the bad about New Hampshire. The fifth worst thing about New Hampshire is being a swing state. There is an issue that isn't as known as other states. When we think of swing states, we tend to think of places like Ohio, Florida, and North Carolina. However, considering New Hampshire has its neighbors, Vermont and New York to the west, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts to the south, and Maine to the east, those states have not voted for a Republican for a presidential election since the mid to late 80s with Reagan and old man Bush. Considering this aspect, one would lean that New Hampshire would be in the same boat. While they vote more liberal than conservative overall, New Hampshire is still flooded with many ads and close races all over in the state. The state is also famously known as one of the earliest states that get the opportunity to choose who they want to represent the party at large in the general election in the presidential election. So to make a long story short, if you hate politics, stay away from New Hampshire. Number 4. The Weather Sucks The state is in New England, so you know what that means. The winter times are just brutal in New Hampshire. From December to March, the state experiences a decent amount of cold temperatures and snowfall. Getting from March to June has a decent amount of a wet environment as the state gets into the summertime. However, the summers are lovely and something you should take into consideration so you can go visit there. June to September is considered the sweet spot as the state doesn't get very dense on the heat and the state will rarely get into the 90s. Although there are a few natural disasters from light hurricanes and some wildfires, so always be careful. Don't discourage that from letting you live and visit in New Hampshire. It's a great place to live or visit. Number three, the state lacks in diversity. Considering nearby New York and Massachusetts are some of the fondest places for being in a diverse environment, you would think places like New Hampshire and the rest of New England would also be very various. However, unfortunately, that's not the case for the most part. And New Hampshire is one of those stories. For example, just a measly 1.5% of the New Hampshire population is African American. Meanwhile, the pure Caucasian population is 88.3% of the state's population. You can even see it in something like religion, as New Hampshire, similar to other New England states, aren't really into the whole religion thing. So if you're looking for a place where you can see many different backgrounds from around the country, you might want to look elsewhere. Number 2. New Hampshire is quiet and boring. Considering how small New Hampshire is, it's one of the least densely populated states in the nation, it is only a matter of time for you to start getting bored out of your mind. Although, if you are into making a road trip to Boston or New York City for some nightlife, it does make a good road trip. However, it is only fascinating for those who are into wildlife, hiking, fishing, and other various outdoor activities that are more common things that the locals are more into. So, if you want nightlife, plan more trips if you want to live in New Hampshire. And the number one worst thing about living in New Hampshire is lacking strong jobs. New Hampshire is one of the worst states to be a middle class resident, as New Hampshire does not precisely have vital middle class jobs. Most are in the realm of lower class to upper class jobs, not much in between. Moreover, the middle class has been shrunk by nearly 12% over the last five years in New Hampshire. 
In addition, the rising cost of living and housing in New Hampshire makes the state not exactly a place that people would want to look to as a beacon of hope for average day Americans. Thankfully, those are the worst aspects of living in New Hampshire, not as bad as other good aspects, so if you want to live in New Hampshire, you should start off with the best characteristics, starting with... The fifth best thing about New Hampshire is the healthy residents. New Hampshire is well, as the state's population goes, in looking into a healthier lifestyle. Although New Hampshire has substantial numbers when it comes to having different rates on being insured, as well as access to Medicare, having access to clean air and water, staying physically in shape, having strong wages, and for the most part keeping sins out of the human system. Although there is an outlier, as New Hampshire struggles with overdrinking. The state average in the state of New Hampshire is nearly four gallons of alcohol a year, easily the highest in the nation. Nevertheless, the state's residents are very healthy, so you should give them your attention. Number four, the state is great for if you're a nature lover. New Hampshire, or rather most of England, is one of the kings of sights when you're looking for lush trees, as well as crystal lakes that are littered throughout the state, making New Hampshire a great place for those who are into hiking, fishing, and swimming activities throughout the state. Nevertheless, of course, you also have your neighboring states to explore when seeing nature throughout the Northeast, seeing the leaves change in the fall, the snow that covers the environment, and the crisp and high-quality air that is all present in New Hampshire, or rather most of New England. The third best thing about New Hampshire is the education. Many New England states are well known for education, and New Hampshire is no different. New Hampshire is the fourth best state in the nation regarding K-12 through education. However, college readiness is the eighth best in the nation. 11th in high school graduation rate, 5th in math, 4th in reading, and 7th in preschool enrollment. As when it comes to higher education in the Granite State, unfortunately the area is not as famous as Massachusetts, Connecticut, and also even the rest of New England. The state ranks 36th in higher education, which isn't the worst in the nation, but New Hampshire is proficient in educating the kittens. Number 2. The state is tax-friendly. Now, there is an outlier to this statement, as New Hampshire has one of the highest property taxes in the nation. Suppose you own an average-priced home in New Hampshire, which is $261,700. You're going to be spending a little over $5,700 a year on your home. That's the third highest in the nation, and it only goes up from there. Property taxes are what fuel the state at large. Once you get past that, you're living a libertarian lifestyle. There's no sales tax in New Hampshire, and no real income tax in the state. You only get a 5% income tax on your interest and dividends. Hourly wages and salaries are left alone. Those respectful taxes are why New Hampshire is considered on average to be the most affordable state in the New England area. And the number one best thing about New Hampshire is a super safe state. Finding horrific criminals that's going to do wrong to you in New Hampshire, it's actually pretty sporadic. The Granite State ranks as the second safest state in the nation. In terms of property crime, New Hampshire is the second lowest in the nation, at two property crimes per 100,000 residents. Also regarding the violent crime, New Hampshire is the second lowest in the country, with only two violent crimes per 100,000 residents. I don't want to toot my own horns, but New Hampshire is a phenomenal state to call home on the safety aspects in America. I know, that was an awful joke. I apologize. So that's it. Those are the good and the bad about living in New Hampshire. Obviously, that's not the only things that are good or bad about the Granite State, so I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments below. And please, while you're at it, please like this video, check out some of these other videos, and subscribe to Moonlight Productions if you haven't already. Follow me on social media, and please take care of yourself. Bye!